So hello everyone, welcome to Codeware. So today we will be starting with the intestinal part in this flanknology. Okay, and in this particular video, we will be discussing about firstly the small intestine, and in the later upcoming video, we will be continuing with the large intestine. Okay, so if we talk about the intestine, we all know it will be after the stomach. Okay, so it will extend from the pyloric end and it will be terminating at the anus portion. Okay, if we talk about how and where it is positioned first of all so if we divide the abdominal cavity into its two half the right and the right left half so this is the left half okay and this is the right half okay so the intestinal portion is situated in the right half of the abdominal cavity okay so this is the part or the region where the intestine is situated and we all know the major portion of the left side of the abdominal cavity has been occupied by your treatment okay so talking about the length of this large tube that is there in the abdominal cavity which is the intestine so it is about 52 52 meters okay and if it is divided into two segments we all know the small intestine and the large intestine so talking about the small intestine it is about nearly 40 meters okay and further divided into three segments the duodenum which is about one meter the jejunum which is about 38 meters the longest portion of the small intestine and then there will be the ileum which is comprising of one meter of length right now talking about the second portion which is the large intestine so the large intestine is further bifurcated into three regions which is the cecum colon and rectum the dimension or the length of the cecum is about 0.75 meters the colon which is the largest in the terms of the length in the large intestine is about 10 meters and then there is the rectum which is 0.25 meters okay so this was all about the length of the intestinal part now we will be discussing about the small intestine okay so as i had earlier mentioned also that it will start from the pylorus and end at the ileocecal orifice okay talking about the diameter of the intestine of the small intestine to be precise so the diameter of the small intestine in case of a large animal like uh, cattle and the buffalo it is about the five to six centimeter right and it comprises of the three regions we had discussed that there is duodenum there is jejunum and the ileum and if we talk about the small ruminants like sheep and goat so the length of the intestine is about 20 meters right and the diameter is two to three centimeter okay so coming on to the duodenum which is the very first part of the small intestine so it is start from the it is the very first part of the small intestine and this is the part which is be which will be extending from the pyloric end right so it will start from the pylorus passing the it will pass dorsally okay first it will be passing dorsally then caudally at the visceral surface of the liver okay and presents an s-shaped curve so let me tell you how the line is signifying over here that what they had mentioned that it will be the starting point would be the pyloric end okay so the duodenum will be starting from the pyloric end right consider this to be the liver okay so this is your liver right this is the liver okay now this would be the parietal surface of the liver okay this is the parietal surface of the liver and this which i am marking the dotted region would be the visceral surface okay so the intestine will be touching and passing from the visceral surface of the liver okay it will be passing from the visceral surface of liver okay so this is the small intestine and the portion is the duodenum okay i hope this part is clear how the uh, small intestine or the duodenal part is touching the visceral surface of the liver and they are saying that it will further move dorsally and caudally means it will be traveling backward and upward okay and through this movement only there will be formation of an s shaped curve okay there is a formation of s shaped curve so this curve which i am marking with the yellow pen 
so this would give me s shaped curve right so this was all about what the first line was signifying now moving ahead so it will further pass cautiously and at the level of the tuber coxae and the portion would be known as the descending part of the tubercle now it will form a turn known as the caudal flexure right and continue as the ascending part so what they are saying that this part which is the descending part of the tubercle this is the descending part which is going caudally so the descending part will be moving caudally okay the descending part will be moving caudally and at the level of the tuber coxae okay at the level of the tuber coxae it will form a turn okay it will form a turn you can see over here it will form a turn and that turn will be known as your caudal flexion okay after forming the caudal flexion it will pass on cranially okay it will move cranially after taking a u turn it will move cranially and that part will be known as the ascending part of duodenum okay so this was all about what they were saying okay so the ascending part will pass forward and become continuous with the jejunum at the left side of the cranial mesenchymal artery so what they were saying that obviously the duodenum will be continuing as jejunum okay and where it would be it would be at the left side of the cranial mesenteric artery so if this green dotted line is the your cranial mesenteric artery so the duodenum would be at the left side okay so the duodenum will be moving at the left side of the cma or the cranial mesenteric artery right this part is clear now Uh, the descending part and the caudal flexure ascending part are attached to the pancreas colon so there is about the attachment so how they are attached the portion of the duodenum how they are attached over here so they were discussing about that that the descending part the caudal flexure and the ascending part are attached to the pancreas colon and the cecum by a short fold of the peritoneum okay so there would be a short fold of the peritoneum which will be at attaching all the three regions of the duodenum that i had discussed earlier with the your pancreas colon and the cecum okay and that would be known as what the mesoduodenum okay that would be known as what mesoduodenum that fold that are attaching the three regions of the duodenum which is the descending caudal flexure and the ascending part to the pancreas colon and cecum will be known as the Mesa duodenum. Okay. Now, discussing about how the ducts will be opening. Okay. So the bile duct will open into the duodenum at the second bend of the S curve, which is about 0.5 meter away from the pyloric end. And cordial to the your bile duct opening means just cordial to the opening of the bile duct and 0.525 meter cordial. Okay. To the entry of the bile duct, there will be what a pancreatic duct. So look over here. That this is the pyloric end, right? So from the pyloric end, the bile duct will be opening at the distance of the 0.5 meter. And caudal, if we go caudal to the bile duct at the distance of 0.25 meter, we will find what the pancreatic duct. And there is a speciality in the case of the sheep and goat that the bile duct and the pancreatic duct will join priorly and open together at the distance of 20 cm from the pyloric end okay this was all about the duodenum portion now talking about the jejunum so it is considered the most of the length as we had discussed it was about the 40 m in length right it was about 40 m in length and compare it comprises of several coils and these coils are when you will be uh, doing the post mortem in your second year of the veterinary profession so you will be seeing about the interspinal part and you can see clearly how coiled the jejunal portion is okay and these closed coils are constructed and dilated to form a u shaped loop okay these are quite means entangled in the, uh, in itself okay and 
and form a U-shaped loops. Okay, so by the attachment of the Millen ring, see, we all know the peritoneal fold which is there attaching to the interspan is known as mesentery. So if this is the mesentery, okay, this is the mesentery. So the jejunum is attached like this to the. So this is the mesentery. The jejunum is attached like this to the mesentery. Means a super coiled region, superly coiled. Okay, it is coiled superly. Means there are several U-shaped loop that are coiled and just attached to the mesentery, right? To display the organ means if we want to display this particular jejunal region, we have to detach the jejunum from the mesentery such that the U-shaped loop that are there due to the folding. And attachment to the mesentery. When we will be detaching the jejunum from the mesentery, we can uh, clearly visualize the jejunal portion to be straight from what? From the U-shaped loops, right? So we have to remove the attachment for firstly, okay? And jejunum is the mobile part of the intestine. We all know, okay? And it occupies the space between the right surface of the rumen, okay? And the right abdominal wall below the large intestine. So, what does that mean? Is that if this is the rumen, okay, okay, so it is situated where to the right side. So, this would be the jejunum. This would be the jejunum, right? So it is situated to the right side of the rumen. Okay, so ruminal surface ke right side mein jejunum present hoti. If we talk about that, if this is the large intestine, okay, so if this is the large intestine, so below the large intestine, there will be your jejunum. Okay, means rumen ke right side mein or large intestine ke niche present hoti hai aapki jejunum. Okay, and okay, so the blood vessels of the jejunum are arranged in the flu layers and the arches in the mesentery. So, ye kya hai? Ye ek jo region mein mark kar raha hoon. If you can see that this region that I am marking, okay, when you will be doing post mortem in your second year, you will be visualizing that this yellow region will be the fold of the peritoneum which will be attaching the intestine or known as your mesentery so mesentery is filled with full of the blood vessels right so mesentery these are the blood vessels so mesentery contains a large amount of the blood vessels inside it okay and the straight vessels connects to the loop of the jejunum with the con convexity of the vesicular arches so the convexity will be attaching to the vesicular arch right now talking about the ileum it is the last part we all know it is the terminal part of the small intestine and a thick tube means the uh, thickness of the ileum is quite large means that it is quite thicker okay as compared to the jejunum and the deuter and it is attached with the cecum at its cranial part. So, if this is the cecal, so here it will be attaching at the cranial part. This will be the cranial part. This is the ileum, and this is the cecal, right? It terminates at the medial surface of the cecum. Okay, so the medial to the cecum it will be attaching right at the cecocolic junction. Okay, so at the cecocolic junction it will be attaching at the cecocolic junction. So, this was all about the anatomical, the gross anatomy of the intestine. And in the later video and later upcoming sessions, we will be discussing about the large intestine. Okay, so thank you everyone. Have a good day.